We have identified properties that all living things possess. But where and how do these properties arise? While walking down the street, looking at the sun, sky, trees, and telephone poles, you might ask, what are these things made of? And is there a difference between the substances the air is made of and the substances these trees are made of? Or the substances I am made of? Surprisingly, the answer is no. All physical things in the universe are made of matter. And matter is composed of atoms. The air, the tree, the asphalt, and the grass under my feet are all made of pretty much the same atoms as I am. These birds are alive, while this bird is dead. Yet they are made of the same things. To understand life, to understand the difference between things that are alive and things that are not alive, we have to understand the chemistry of life inside us. A racquetball makes a pretty good model for the outside of an atom. In reality, atoms are far too small to see, even through the most advanced microscope. Scientists have performed ingenious experiments during the past four centuries to construct a model of the atom and verify its accuracy. The electrons move so quickly around the nucleus in their individual shells that each shell behaves like a solid, negatively charged sphere. These shells form concentric spheres that surround the nucleus. Each shell can contain a certain number of electrons. The valence electrons form the exterior shell that is impenetrable to physical attack, determines the usual size of a given atom, and can react with the valence electrons of other atoms through chemical interactions. Let's imagine that the outside of this racquetball is the valence shell of a nitrogen atom. Now let's pretend we have a nuclear fission axe, which of course does not exist, that we can cut this atom in half with to see what's inside. This is a cross-section of the nitrogen atom. Blue neutrons and red protons in the center represent the nucleus. The circling yellow balls represent electrons in their orbitals. Now let's turn this into the two-dimensional model we will use to represent atoms from now on in this class. We draw the nucleus in the center and use the atomic symbol from the periodic table to indicate an atom. On the top, the atomic number, which identifies an atom, tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. The bottom number is the atomic mass. Because electrons have very little mass, when rounded, the atomic mass number tells us the number of protons and the number of neutrons in the nucleus of the average atom. Protons have a positive charge, while neutrons have no charge. 14 minus 7 protons means there are 7 neutrons in an average isotope of nitrogen. Next we draw the innermost electron orbital, or shell. It can only hold 2 total electrons and is called the s orbital. The next orbitals are called the 2s and 2p orbitals. The second orbital is also nitrogen's valence orbital. The periodic table tells us the total number of atomic particles in an uncharged atom. The number of electrons with a negative charge is the same as the number of positively charged protons in an uncharged atom. Therefore, since uncharged nitrogen has seven protons, it will have seven total electrons. Since two fit in the first shell or orbital, Nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell. These valence electrons determine how nitrogen reacts chemically with the matter in the universe around it.